Hey everybody, it's the R&B Show. And now, the two guys whose game is practically as tight as Ice-T himself. If you can dig it. You almost forget about it there, Rosie. <laughs> he completely botched that. Let me, let me tell you something. Rosie's not himself today, and there's a good, big reason why. And uh, you can't see it because he doesn't have the camera on himself. It's there, because yeah. Rosie had to shave. He had, he had to shave a little bit of his beard off. I did. Rosie, is, is that what's affecting you? It's, it's, you're just not Rosie. I think so. Beard, man. I think so. I mean, yeah. I can like run in front of the camera here real quick and show well, you. Well, he has a little bit of the goatee, yeah. but he doesn't have the beard. And, nope. and to, to quite, quite frankly, it, it's alarming. <laughs> and I yeah. say this because I actually had to shave off mine. Yeah, you guys are all clean shaved. I had to, I because, know. but mine is because I actually messed up when I was doing the lining. I have to make it look just so, and then I got, I got a little bit too much on one side, <laughs> and then I had to compensate, and then by the time you knew it, I was all shaved. shaved yeah. Off. I, so, I figured, well, I'm gonna, you know, it's getting warmer. I'm going to go with the goatee, and then, of course, the wife sees me, and she's like, you cut it too short. And I'm like, you know what? Every time it's something. I, so I'm just going to shave it all off. Grow the beard back, and we'll be happy. Is that yeah. why the camera's not on you today? You don't want no, to no. see you? Or Rosie's what? embarrassed a little bit. Is this no, not no. Rosie? It's, it, it was not a good morning. It's just uh, it's a weird day. It's an off day. It's been a weird week. It has you been. Were, you were gone yesterday. Yeah. And I a think lot of kids were off. Yeah. With the weather. Yeah. That's that true. threw me off. Yeah, it's Which just... the weather wasn't even that bad. I mean, let's, no. Let's, let's, let's hey, it's better it. to be safe than sorry, my friend. I was expecting this massive ice storm, and we got barely any <laughs> ice at all, so... Yeah. A lot of a lot of school, a lot of games were canceled, Ricardo. By nine o'clock, it was fine. I, yeah, well, it it really cleared up. Uh, it was, took a turn for the better towards the end of the night, I should say. Hey, episode number twenty-four of the only podcast dedicated to high school sports in the Fox Valley area. I'm your co-host, Ricardo Arguello. Sitting alongside with me, as always, is Brett Christofferson. We're both with USA Today Network, Wisconsin, and. You heard him in the beginning. That's Jim Rosen, Dick Rosie. Uh, he's our producer, our engineer. So uh, we you got the three amigos here, ready to. Get this week started, I guess, in terms of the latter part of the week. Uh, a couple of the topics that we'll be covering today, and, and this the first one is really more so me, is WIA State Wrestling. I'll give a preview and take a look at some of our top contenders heading down there to the Cole Center. Brett, big, big, big week for the uh, the grapplers there in our area. We're then also going to switch over to WIA postseason preview of the girls' side, the WIA girls' side. I made my state picks. I want to run them by and see what Brett says. Let me, let me say one thing. Okay. One word to describe your state picks, Homer. Yes. <laughs> and As I, always. And, I, and, and, no, and, and you know what? I, I absolutely agree with you, Brett. I'm a little bit of a Homer because their Division Two might have been a little bit of a stretch there. But, you know, I, you know maybe went with some, uh, some favorable, favorable conditions for some of our area teams. Just like you do the with uh, state football. All seven uh, predictions, uh, all seven divisions, <laughs> they're right. all – uh, Appleton schools. Yeah. Well, I had six of the seven right, though, but you had to give me some credit <laughs> there. Uh, then we're going to switch a topic that I know, Brett, that you're very passionate about, Mr. Basketball. Who's going to win it this well, year? I know who it's not going to be. It's not going to be me. Okay, yeah, that's true, though you were in the contention up until the final couple weeks here. We'll take a look <laughs> at that, and then we'll wrap up uh, the show uh, talking a little bit about our varsity roundtable with wrestlers Bo Yeniman of Nina and Brock Danielski of Appleton North. Got the big guys in this this week, Brett. Uh, Bo Yeniman, 195, Brock Daniel- Danielski, 220. So you're looking at some of the bigger guys coming in here. Brett, I don't want you to be afraid. These are some big guys. No, but I want to see them uh, demonstrate on oh, you. Oh, no, no, no. For that's that. not happening. That would be good video. That's Rosie. not happening. There's not enough yeah, insurance. it would be. Not yeah. enough insurance. We get hits for that. We got plenty of room up here, too. Yeah. We not do. enough insurance to cover that. So Put some that, padding down. That's on the docket for the show today, but... Uh, Let's start with WI State Wrestling. So, Brett, why don't you take a seat here and chill for a little bit because this is more so my <laughs> – I guess I'm out of this one. My, my right. topic here. I mean, if you're, you're free to interject whatever you may Let want me, uh, to. I'll be right back, okay? Yeah, here we go. he's going <laughs> to – by the way, go, go pick up some more uh, uh, facial hair for, for Rosie over there. Yeah, he's not really. himself. But uh, mm. WI State Wrestling kicks off this Thursday uh, at the Cole Center preliminaries and then some quarterfinals there uh, in terms of Division One, anyway. The Cole Center is always a zoo when this, this three-day monstrosity takes place. A lot of wrestlers, a lot of folks down there. The, the Cole Center is always pretty much full, Brett, as you know, wrestling very popular in this state. How would you compare it to state track? Uh, state track is more of a zoo. Yeah, it opinion. is. It, it is, is more of a zoo. It though, is a spectacle. There are times at the Cole Center when wrestling has taken place, though, when it's getting to um, right before the quarterfinals. It, it, everything is full. Everything is packed, and uh, it, gets, it gets very loud. And when you're having, like, I think they have six mats set up, or maybe it's eight. I can't remember how many they have down there. It gets confusing as well. So it, it, it's a zoo, but state track, I think, is is something maybe a step higher in terms of the, the craziness factor. I've never covered state wrestling. 
I've covered wrestling before and okay. sectionals, but I've never been to Madison for state wrestling, so I don't know what the, especially the individual t- uh, tournament yeah. is like. I've been to lacrosse many times now for state track, and uh, that's a spectacle. So yes. I can only, I, I, that's why I thought it's got to be with all the individuals in both events, track and wrestling, it's got to be sort of similar, trying to keep uh, track of where everybody is. Right, and, and the, of course the added thing with state track, Brett, the weather part of it. Yeah. You know, you don't yeah. have to worry about that with the Cole Center and the wrestling tournament. So that's what I think separates us. <laughs> Makes state track kind of its own thing. Track. Yeah, yeah. And that, 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 that to me is the number one yeah. uh, in terms of a big old zoo is that state track meet uh, that goes over there at lacrosse. Though we always have a good time heading over to lacrosse. And you know what we? lacrosse needs to do? They need to be like uh, track town in Eugene, Oregon, and, and put the put the the cover uh, over the grandstand, over the, over the bleachers, ah, over, yes. the, over the – Right. Stands. It does get it, it gets beastly hot if it's not raining, or you, you if it rains, you would have some protection either way. But I, I, they should just build that uh, because it would be, it would fit perfectly for. And it only needs stadium. to get it only needs to get in the early 80s, uh, in the low 80s, for it to be just un- uncomfortably hot over there in the stands. The sun's beating down you. You got no cover. I've and, sat and in those stands. Yeah, you know, and, and they're metal stands, so metal you know stands. they get very very warm. Oh boy, I, I've seen. I've, I, oftentimes, I've glanced up there and I've seen people just struggling, oh, just struggling tough. there. I'll put. Uh, I'll try to like put a towel or something around my neck. Yeah. Like you know, my my son made it to state track three years in in high school, hoping that the the youngest can follow his lead and make it as well. <laughs> um, and it's a great time. But yeah, when you're sitting, and those days are long days at lacrosse too, and as you know, uh, covering that, um, and you're in that sun. And uh, so you do. You're trying to. You got all this. Uh, you, you look like Peter Gammons. You know, I, I saw Peter Gammons <laughs> once at, at uh, Phoenix <laughs> down at spring training, and he had he had so much um, suntan lotion, sunscreen on it was all white. He had like stuff, just globs of stuff. That's Aww. kind of what we are in in, uh, in lacrosse. Leave Gammons alone, man. And uh, got the towel over the neck so that the the neck. That's the worst for me. Is that when the neck uh, burns and gets. Uh, you oh know, yeah, it looks like a beat. Yes. Well, listen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run down our state state qualifiers, and then I'm going to quickly uh, give my thoughts on who I expect to kind of take that next step because we have qualifiers but then we have favorites and then we have guys who I in my opinion should win their respective division so let's start with division one 106 Jaden Verhagen of Kakana Kakana by the way has a bunch of guys I think freedom might have the most of anyone in our area they have seven wow going to, uh, a program high uh, Jaden Verhagen 106 this is division one by the way also in division one 113 Drake Hayward of Nina Eric Barnett of Hortonville more on him in a second 120 Briar Haas of Nina, John Diener of Kakana at 132 in Division One. Brandon Mix of Kakana, 138. Britton Goymerick of Appleton North. Zach Sharonbrock of Appleton East, I believe the only Patriot heading over to the tournament. 152, Zach Lee of Kakana. 160, David Euler of Nina. And then at 170, Kirkland Hills of Hortonville. At 182, Bryson Alstein of Kakana. Isaiah McCormick of Nina. 195, Alex Mishka of Kimberly. Bo Yinneman of Nina. More on him in a second as well. Marshall Cools of Nina at 220. Brock Danielski uh, of Appleton North at 220. And then Keaton Cleaver, 285. That's our Division One field. And let me let me quickly break down for, for, for those of you who are heading down there. In my opinion, who should be some of the top guys? Now, I've on my little list here, I've kind of highlighted guys who I think will make it to the final. Okay, that's Barnett of Hortonville, Mix of Kakana, Goymeric of Appleton North, Lee of Kakana, Alstein of Kakana, Yinneman of Nina, Cleaver of Kakana. Now, among that group of seven in Division One, there are four guys who I think will win their respective titles. This we might have more divi- we might have more champs this year than in any of the time I've ever covered the tournament. I've been covering it basically the first couple years I went with. I think I went with Tom uh, Golf. Uh, there, our, our esteemed colleague who who, who, uh, who took the buyout quite a couple a number of years ago. I yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, but uh, that he guy knew Mr. more about wrestling, wrestling than anyone I ever know. The guy's forgotten more than I'll ever know. Incredible. I learned from Yoda there. The guy's a Yoda of wrestling. Anyway, Barnett is a nationally ranked guy, ranked third in the country, number one ranked also in his weight class at Wisconsin Wrestling Online. He is, if he doesn't, in fact, I talked to him uh, yesterday night, Pretty much, if he, he felt if he doesn't not just win the title but dominate his opponent, he's disappointed. Mm. That's how good he is. Uh, he should make it. He should win his state title. Zach Lee at 152. He actually dropped down. Zach Lee was do, was at 160 for most of the season. Now he's at 152. So interesting to watch. Zach Lee, obviously of the famous Lee brothers over there, Kakana. Uh, Bo Yinneman, undefeated for Nina at 195. He's been ranked number one all year in the state. 
Expect him to get there. And then the big guy, Keaton Cleaver of Kalkana, also ranked nationally, I believe, in the top 20. Uh, he should win that 2085 title, his repeat championship, both Cleaver and Barnett uh, returning state champs, Brett. So uh, that's going to be interesting for Division One. Real quick, I'm going to run down Division Two. Caden Colts at 106, Carson McHugh at 106, Wyatt Kaczkowski at Seymour, Colby McHugh at Freedom, Coy Murphy at Freedom at 120. By the way, Kaczkowski and McHugh at 113. DeRocher of Wrightstown, Ben DeRocher at 132, Garrett Ruckdeschel, New London at 138. Then a couple of Freedom kids, Sam Peters at 152. Uh, don't forget about Matt Maitland at Wrightstown. He's also at 145. Thomas Peters of Seymour at 160. Gavin Lasso of Chilton Hilbert at 160. Evan Vosters at 160. And then at 170, Brett, Bryce Schumacher, Little yeah. Shoot. Jacob Hoyer of New London. Dakota Brockman of Freedom. By the way, that Schumacher-Brockman championship in the sectional, that was a pretty good one, watching that one. Those two guys go at each other. Two very good wrestlers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. And then Matt Verhasselt, a friend of the show, um, for outstanding quarterback uh, for Freedom. He's at 195, and then uh, well, let's let's start let's stop there at D2, because Evan Vosters, in my opinion, out of all those wrestlers, he's number one ranked at 160. I'd be shocked if he doesn't win the state championship. His older brother, his older cousin, I should say, Seth Vosters, won it a couple years ago. Uh, so that Vosters name very very uh, prominent uh, in Freedom Wrestling, and then in Division Three. Uh, kind of a shorter list for Division Three. We only have a couple guys: Carter Greening of Wyoming, Fremont, Grant Geiger of Brilliant, uh, Sean Fisher of Wyoming, Fremont, Justin Kemp of Wyoming, Fremont, Sammy Van Stratton of Shyockton, Levi Snordom of Shyockton, Carter Stabane of Brilliant, and Levi Galoff of Brilliant. Of all those guys in Division Three, Sean Fisher at Wyoming, Fremont at 120. Expect him to make the state final. I don't know if he'll win it because he's going to have to run into some top guys there. Let me tell you, it's kind of a stacked 120 uh, in Division Three, but. Uh, I'm counting, Brett. So out of all the all the all, all that we have here, I have one, two, three, four, five champions. I predict for our area. That's a very very high number. Last year we had two, so uh, I think it's an uptick uh, in terms of our wrestling output this season. It's amazing to see because usually uh, our wrestling is always e excellent here, especially with the team aspect. Now you're talking about an all-time possible uh, showing by our area guys. Shows you that wrestling is alive <laughs> and well. It is we alive Valley, right? and well, yes. Yeah. Did so we talk about that earlier this season? We, we did. Uh, I think people were talking about how it, there might be a lack of interest at some, but not here. No, no. Not in this area. <clears throat> that is not the case. I just rattled off, I think, 41, 42 wrestlers yeah. that are heading down to the state tournament. So I'll be covering all that. So please check it out. Uh, Thursday, actually, we have, is it Jordan Schelling who's doing all the, our online stuff, so be sure to check out postcrescent.com because, again, they have preliminary, some quarterfinals in Division One, Quarterfinals Division Two take place Friday uh, morning. That's when I'll be there. I'll be there Friday through Saturday. I'll be there all day on both those days, so please check me out at PC Ricardo to follow along those wrestling updates, Brett. So, hey. Time for us to switch to basketball. Yeah, I just took a picture of Rosie, by the way, and, and <laughs> I'm going to put it on <laughs> yeah. social media. Yes. You, go, you should try and put it in the uh, uh, Facebook feed here. Brett, Brett, Rosie trying to trying to hide a little bit. Duck just kinda down. Duck trying, down. Trying to hide, not show off uh, the, the, the lack of facial well, hair. Well, good luck in Madison. I Thank know you. It starts tomorrow. It's three days of wall-to-wall uh, -wall wrestling coverage. Right. So good luck. Thank you. I'll need it. Uh, we're switching to girls' WI postseason preview. Now, Brett, I made my state picks. And we have three. I'm so loud there. Why, why, why are you turning that <laughs> on? Uh, we have three area, in my opinion, area me? state champs. Um, in Division One. I've already picked Appleton North to win it. In D2, I've picked Seymour to win it, Brett. And I don't know if you agree with that one so much. D3, I have Wrightstown also. Homer, Homer, Homer. Championship. <laughs> hey, I, and I, not Snow Mud. Now I had Shyock in, in, in D4. But I didn't have them winning it. I had them out in the <laughs> semifinal true, round. Yeah, you didn't have so, them winning it. Uh, am I nuts, Brett? Uh, no, I, I don't. Am I a little off base in my picks? No, I mean those are all very good teams. I'm still wondering about Appleton North, just because uh, while they're uh, and Rosie, you, you and I talked about this. They're yeah. obviously a very impressive team. So many uh, girls back from last year's state title team, but are they as good as last year's uh, squad? I don't know. There's a lot of good Division One teams out there that they're going to run into. I, I guess uh, we'll, we'll find out. I'm not. I'm not convinced. That the, the that the Lightning are going to hold up uh, the gold ball this year in Seymour D two. I thought Beaver Dam was the team to beat. Right, and here's the thing, and people have asked me, Where, "Where's Beaver Dam?" Listen, they have to run into Milwaukee Vincent, which beat King earlier this season, by the way. So Vincent's a very very good team. They have to run into Vincent. I want to say in the sectional semifinal. Now my whole scenario unfolds this way, BC. Vincent beats Beaver Dam in the sectional semifinal. 
Then they play Seymour in the sectional final. That's where I have Seymour getting a little bit of a mild upset and knocking off Vincent heading over to the state uh, a cha- a semifinal at the rush center. That's where I feel that they're going to they're gonna take it all, Brad. They're going to bring home the gold. They'll meet. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking they're going to meet Hortonville in the semifinal because they seed it now. And I'm thinking Hortonville, when they get in there, they might be the four seed, depending on who, who the other two entries are. Uh, so you're talking about beating Hortonville in the state semifinal team. They've already beaten the season, by the way, Seymour, in their regular season matchup. Seymour winning the title overall. I believe I have them beating New Berlin Eisenhower. Thoughts on that? You, that's a homer pick, you think? As far as Seymour? Yeah. No, because they're ranked number two in the state. Okay, all I, right. I, I just like giving you a, kind of a hard time <laughs> okay. because, uh, as I said, you know, I, I see your football picks. I'm guessing boys basketball, you have Kimberly number one yes. or Oshkosh North, one of the two. Right. Uh, D2 will be Kakan and right. D3 will be Xavier. Yes. Uh, D4 will be uh, hmm, who is uh, who's a good team around here? You know, Shia, I think got a number one seed, but I don't, I don't know if they'll make it there. D5 will be like Green Bay New Lutheran or, or Hilbert <laughs> or something like that. You know, and then football next year, all seven divisions will be oh, yes. Kimberly <laughs> in one, Menasha in but two. But I wasn't too no. far off. Freedom though. in three. You know, uh, but 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 I'm not too far off because we had six of the seven of our area schools of our Gannett schools make it there in the, in the championship for football. We've got a lot of good uh, good teams in, our, do. in our USA Today network. You Wisconsin can say market. it's Homer. I say it's because we have outstanding teams here in this area. Outstanding right. teams, outstanding are athletes, and outstanding yeah. engagement based on some of the things I've seen uh, as uh, now that the, the, the uh, plans are really ramping up for the uh, Wisconsin High School Sports Award show on May 11th. Mm. Yeah. And uh, really seeing some uh, some very heavy interest, uh, as always, in, in – uh, Expected. Yeah, yeah you got some big more. Deal around here. You got some more entries to the IM Sports Award, right? Yeah, we ended up with 17. So thanks to uh, everyone who contributed uh, nominees, uh, we were one of the tops in uh, in the entire uh, Gannett market for That's uh, outstanding. Yeah, for for nominees. So it was, it was a great great job by all of you. And again, the IM Sport Award presented by the Milwaukee Bucks uh, honors uh, an athlete in our one of our markets who gives back to their community through their work with uh, the youth. And I think it's a really cool award. Still looking for those sideline selfies. You know, if you're at a, an event uh, and you want to show your school spirit, just take a photo of yourself, a selfie, and use the hashtag uh, WI Sideline Selfie. Post it to Instagram, and you'll have an opportunity to meet our special guest that night. That's our May 11th show. Aaron Rodgers is uh, going to be the uh, can't wait the special guest. I can't wait. Already submitted my questions for the Q and A with with uh, number twelve. So looking forward to that. Tickets are on sale for that too, aren't they? Yeah, let me get the website uh, right now. Uh, absolutely, they are uh, thirty do- uh, thirty five dollars a piece, and you can get them at sportsawards.wisconsinmedia.com. So uh, definitely check it out. And uh, I think hot it's ticket. a great, great deal. It's going to be a hot ticket. It's at the Lambeau Field Atrium. And uh, you and I will be co-hosting it, as always. And I'm, I'm sure you're already thinking about uh, the, the style of tuxedo yes. that you want. Mm. I'm saying no tuxedos this year, guys. No. no. I'm saying just a nice, a nice formal suit. I don't think we need the tuxedo. We can't have something with Aaron Rodgers and then not go all out, Brett. Yeah, but if, I, if, I, if, if, if this was, you know, if this was one of their their, their backups, or if this was just an offensive lineman, eh, if it was Bakhtiari, yeah, whatever. We don't <laughs> have to. We ain't got to get in the tux <laughs> for Hollywood. But it's Aaron Rodgers, dude. So you know, there's gonna be a lot of cameras out there. So I think we got to get into uh, the tux, right? Right, Rosie? Sure. Rosie, why right? not? I mean, so do you guys go with the straight, just black and white, I, or I, do you do put a color, like maybe a touch of well, USA Today work blue or? Well, green? we kind of stayed neutral. We kind of did the silver or gray, right, or metallic silver. Okay. But I think I think. Maybe we don't have to do the bow tie. Maybe we'll do regular tie. How's that's, that? That's kind of How's what I'm that? saying. Yeah, I think we'll we do a little bit more traditional. Kind of, kind of a nice classy okay. tie. No problem. We don't have to do bow tie. How about that? That's, that, that? That'll be our little negotiation there. Yeah, right? I think we'll so. We'll stay with the tux, but we'll go with a little bit of the tie. Like our reservoir dogs do. look? Black and white? No, that's, no, no. no. We're I'm, I'm thinking, skinny tie. I'm thinking Regis Philbin from back in the day and who wants to be a millionaire. You know, oh, the nice, okay. solid, real uh, snazzy yeah. tie, a little shine to it. Yeah. What color? What color do you guys go with? I don't know. How about like a dark gray? Dirk Gray. That's kind of what we've done in the past, but uh, well, I okay. think you got to keep it kind of neutral. Oh, you're right. You do. You know, I, yeah, you don't want to show. You don't want to say that you're. you're I'm not going to wear Fox Valley Lutheran maroon or something <laughs> like that. You don't want to do that. Uh, plus, I suppose plus the show's about the the kids, the yep. athletes, the, yeah. the the teams. It's not about us. We got to stay kind of neutral. We got to stay exactly. in the back. Maybe uh, folks watching online or, or whoever listens uh, onto the podcast can uh, send us. A, what, what, what should we uh, What should we wear that night? Uh, but that's coming fast. And and, and uh, I joked the other day. I said, Well, here we go. Getting a lot of emails again, and yeah. uh, it, you know what time of year it is. It's almost the end of the winter season. Yeah. Hopefully you guys, uh, by the way, spe- speaking of the sports crew, start thinking about those winter nominees. I'm going to need those pretty soon. Okay. Hey, if they would trust me on the red carpet, I would do some crazy Craig Sager jacket probably. Yeah. That's just me. I though. could see you White. in like a real kind of a gold sequin 
yeah, there you type go. Uh, sport yeah. coat, you know, with the with it says yeah. rosy script rosy. Yeah, there you go. Yep, like or a nice uh, golden brown plaid or something like that. Yeah. Well, before we move on to the Mister Basketball topic, Brett, I'm going to give you why I picked the, uh, these three girls teams. By the way, first off, for Appleton North, I know you talked about them a little bit. They've had a little bit of an up and down season. I just think once the lights come on, figuratively speaking, of course, in in, in the postseason is where they're going to shine. Coach Russell, I believe, is one of the best coaches in our area. I think he's going to have that North team ready to go. I think they're going to be, uh, unlike last year, they're going to fly under the radar a little bit, a little bit of an underdog because, you know, they, they do have a couple losses. They're ranked, you know, not number one or number two or number three, actually. So I think that is going to be kind of a boost for them in terms of something to rally around, kind of like the world against us, that kind of thing. I think Appleton North is going to be there at the end. I'd love to see them against King. That'd be a championship that would really, really have a lot of eyeballs on it, Brett, in terms of state interest. Now, in Division Two, yes, I went with a little bit of a stretch having Seymour get there because th- I have it out there, Rosie. They don't have to play Beaver Dam, who beat them last year in the sectional final. Yeah. I have them beating Vincent, but I think I'm, I think the Vincent Beaver Dam sectional semifinal is a legit possibility. I really do think Vincent can beat. Beaver Dam. I mean, again, Vincent beat Milwaukee King early this year, so this is not just some team that's just going to be there just because they're lucky. They got there because they're going to have eight, you know, twenty plus wins on the season. And as for Wrightstown, kind of, that's a team in my opinion that flies under the radar yeah, a little bit. I agree um, with that. This is a team, and by the way, I saw Coach Froke at, at a local drinking establishment last <laughs> this this past weekend, uh, uh, and, and I talked to him a little bit. I said, "Hey, I, I picked your team, Coach, to win the state title." I'm like, "No, no added pressure for you." He's like, "No added pressure." He goes, "Like we're you know there we're a confident team. You know we expect that we have big goals, and I think this is here. Wouldn't that be incredible to lose the players that they had mm-hmm. and for them to win the state title? I think speaks volumes. And as for Shyockton, here's the thing with Shyockton. They're going to get there, in my opinion, get to the state semifinal round. For them, the the big juggernaut is Aquinas. I just don't see them beating Aquinas. I don't see anyone in Division Four beating Aquinas. So that's unfortunate for them. So see, Brett, I'm not that much of a homer. Have Shy Octon losing in the state semifinals. So, uh, you know, I don't want to hear any more of that stuff. Well, we'll see. Uh, sub-regionals <laughs> got under w- underway uh, last night. Some uh, of them did anyway. Yeah, some of them did. And, and there'll be uh, some, some regional action, regional finals on Saturday, potentially uh, a live stream. Uh, Rosie, we're still kind of fingers crossed. Still kind of holding off on that. That would be great. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. I'd be really interested in seeing yes. if you guys are able to pull that off. That'd be great. Mr. Basketball, Brett. Okay, so last Friday, the big FBA showdown mm. that took place at Oshkosh North that we could not live stream. Uh, mm-hmm. Tyrese yes. Halliburton. 42 points, had an incredible game defensively, bunch of rebounds, had a couple of key blocks. Um, well, I've got his line here. 42 okay. points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists, 4 steals, and 2 blocks. Yes. How about that for a night? Uh, uh, Brett, best player on the court that night. Almost a complete opposite of what happened at Kokona where Jordan McCabe kind of dominated that game and Tyrese was kind of caught, kind of chasing a little bit there. I want to know this, Brett. This is what I want to hear from you. Did Halliburton... And remember, Mr. Basketball is, you know, is voted on before the postseason starts, I believe, so they, the, the votes must be this week. Did Tyrese Halliburton take the lead in the Mr. Basketball race over both Jordan McCabe and another guy who we expect to be there, Tyler Harrell of Whitnall? Did he secure that Mr. Basketball award, Brett? No. Okay, why is that? Because you've got to look at the entire body of work. You can't okay. just rely on one single game. I Even if that game's against the number one team in Division Two, who, by the way, Mark Miller claimed was the best team in the state. Let me just say this. Kakana beat Oshkosh North early in the season. They if, did. It, if it was a clean sweep, I would have said, yeah, I think Tyrese has it. But, uh, you know, Jordan McCain still had 33 points in, in the loss uh, on, on Friday night. I still think it's uh, it's a race between McCabe and Hero. And fr- quite frankly, I think McCabe's going to win it. Okay. I think McCabe's got... Well, first of all, of course, he's got the game, and so does Tyrese. And this is not a knock on Tyrese at all. I think uh, very highly of him as a, as a basketball player, and probably even more so as a young man. He's a tremendous, uh, tremendous kid. We had him on varsity roundtable yeah. earlier yeah. this season with Jordan. But I just think Jordan's got the height. He's 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 got the pizzazz. He's got the you know kind of the uh, the the headlines and the videos out there, and and everybody knows about Jordan McCabe, hero. Uh, I think is out of the. I, I don't think he wins it just because of the injuries uh, that that he was. He missed some games sometimes. Although he has been just pouring it on uh, down the stretch. Uh, I think it's Jordan McCabe, and uh, then I think it's uh, everybody else uh, behind him. Okay. See, this is what I think. First off, I think Halliburton. Right now, him and McCabe are running neck and neck on this. And Harrow. Now, now, granted, I do not watch a lot of games featuring Tyler Harrow, the uh, Kentucky recruit, obviously. But from what I saw Friday, I thought. 
Tyrese Halliburton was as dominating a player on both ends of the court and also the intangibles. I haven't seen that kind of dominating performance on both ends of the court now in some time. Uh, when you look at the totality of his body of work, I just think Tyrese Halliburton might win the Mr. Basketball. Now, here's, here's where it gets tricky. Rosie, Brett, mm-hmm. ha- uh, again, Mr. Basketball before the poll season starts. Now, there's a scenario where, in, our, in my opinion, North could lose to Kimberly in that possible st- uh, sectional final yeah. that hopefully you guys are able to produce, live stream possibly. Uh, we're, we're obviously, we're speculating here. If he loses that, McCabe takes his, his Kokona team and wins the D2 state title like we all assume he's going to do. For the Associated Press Player of the Year, does that vault him over? Which, b- by the way, the a- AP Player of the Year includes postseason, Brett. Yeah, I would probably say yes on, on that. Um, but let's – you're probably going to roll your eyes, but let's not forget about the kids uh, from Xavier, including Hunter Plowman. Yes, okay. If they go undefeated – End up at uh, 56 straight victories, and Hunter Plowman, of course, Rosie, we were at Torchy yeah. Clark on Friday to see <coughs> Hunter Plowman take down a 55-year-old scoring record. Okay. Uh, congratulations to Hunter yeah. Plowman for yeah. surpassing Kip nice Whitlinger, and we had Kip on at halftime, and Kip was there. It was a great scene, and at that uh, game, uh, Xavier also won its school record, or sc- uh, matched the school record with, his, which is with its 49th straight victory, going back to the 60s as well. Yeah. <laughs> He should probably be in the conversation, okay, shouldn't he? I agree because with he's you. A, he's a Minnesota yeah. Duluth recruit. I think uh, quite often and probably un, un, uh, a little unfair, I think he flies under the radar around here. I would agree with you, though. I think the only thing hindering uh, Plowman, though, is that Ferris, you know, with his yeah. overall outstanding game, you know, that's kind of a great two, two back one and two punch for the yeah. backcourt. And uh, believe me, this uh, Coach Klarner doesn't care, but – you know, he kind of takes away a little bit from possibly the the overwhelming stats that Plowman would have if it was just Plowman in the backcourt, wouldn't you agree? No doubt, but then, and I did see the the tweet from Quincy Anderson uh, in in uh, response to J.R. Radcliffe's look at the who are the favorites for Mr. Basketball. Of course, J.R. Radcliffe, our colleague down in the Milwaukee mm-hmm. area, yeah, Tyrese does have a, a very good counterpart, a uh, very yes. good partner of his own. Yes, in, that in is Quincy true. Anderson, a phenomenal basketball yeah. player in his own right. Jordan has a very good uh, cast around him, but there's no doubt that he has to carry that team where I think, well, it, for as good as Tyrese is, he does have uh, some reinforcements that, that can okay. certainly take over a game at, definitely. from time to time. Brett, I definitely agree with you on that. Uh, Quincy Anderson at times this season has been a dominating Absolutely. force. Absolutely. Uh, that's something. So that's going to be something that's not going to be decided. I think either way you look at it, there's going to be controversy because I think folks can go a bunch of different ways with the Mr. Basketball. Well, Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't uh, Sam Hauser and Trev Anderson from Spash a couple of years ago share the Mr. Basketball Award? I can't recall, actually. But I, I can look that up right if now. If that was the case, then I thought that was actually a good way to do it. Now, those two guys are on the same team, though, Brett. I don't know if you, if you can get away with doing it with uh, you know Halliburton and McCabe sharing that award. Uh, I, I know this for Associated Press. That's not going to happen. I don't think we're going to have anyone share anything. We're going to try to go where we get one singular guy. 2016, Hauser and Trev Anderson. Oh, yeah, Anderson I see from it. Spash. 2015, Diamond Stone and Henry Ellenson shared the award. Okay, so see, it, that, it, that's, that, that's getting goofy now. 27. Just uh, have one guy do it. I mean. Back in 07, Keaton Nankaville, uh, Madison Memorial, Scott Christofferson. No no relation. No really. No. It is great to see that Christofferson <laughs> name listed as a Mr. Yeah. Bath. Lacrosse Aquinas, they shared it in 07. So there's precedent. Uh, it, it has happened. Uh, I think those might be the only three times as I scroll down the, the list. Brett, I don't like that, and I'll tell you why. I think that's the easy way out. Uh, so that's not a cool thing for Mr. Basketball. Just name it one guy. Don't don't be going with two guys. you you got to take a stand. Go with one guy. I know for the Associated Press, we could not do that. We will not do that. It has to be one person. Can't take the easy way out and do two. So uh, I, I don't think that's going to happen, though. I think it's going to be one guy this year. So we'll see how that Listen, kind of it's, unfolds. It's great to have th- this type of uh, <laughs> type of talent, especially around here in the Fox Valley. Uh, Oshkosh North ranked number one. Kakana still ranked number yep. one in D2. <coughs> and then Xavier ranked number one in, in D3. I haven't had that, you know, a 20, 25-mile radius okay. and that type of talent. But let's not be a prisoner of the moment, too. And I know that Tyrese had a fantastic game. But you look back at that first meeting. Tyrese, 19 points, 8 boards, 7 assists, uh, 1 steal. Jordan McCabe, 41 points. So he lit it up that night when Kakana beat them earlier in the season. And Halliburton had, uh, and I don't want to bring this up, uh, belabor the point too, he had four turnovers four that turnover. were kind of critical. In a 94-89 uh, yeah. victory for Yeah, Kukana. so, I mean, exactly, uh, like I said, it, but you always want to finish strong. No doubt. It's and all that, about that, how you finish. And that does leave more of an impression, I think, when 
how right. you finish, but still, you got to look at the overall body of work. I personally would not be adverse to uh, them sharing the award. I'd have no problem with that. There's there's precedent there for it. I mean, sometimes you, it, you're trying to split hairs, trying to figure out who uh, deserves the award. But if you had to go with one, I just think that uh, I think Jordan McCabe edges out Tyrese and edges out uh, Tyler Hero, and okay. he'll, he'll he'll come away again. He's got kind of the headlines. He's got the hype, and uh, he's <laughs> he's got the game, uh, no doubt about it. Hoping I'm hoping I can ca- maybe catch up with with uh, Jordan, maybe doing a, a kind of more of a visual storytelling type piece with yeah, him. Oh, that'd be would, cool. would be kind of fun. I do agree with you this, Brett. Tyrese and Jordan, 1-2, Harrow 3. I would uh, agree with I, that I if, if that's Harrell. how it yeah. finishes. But though um, I, would, I still would not be surprised if it's a, if it's a dead heat and uh, Halliburton and McCabe go. And how fitting actually would that be? Those guys are strong. They're, they're tight. They're good, they're, they're good friends. Yeah. They've yeah. got great game. And then they're going to take it to the next level into the Big 12 with uh, Halliburton going to Iowa State and uh, McCabe going to West Virginia. So they'll the, play the each friendly, other in college, yeah. right? The, oh, yeah. The yeah. friendly rivalry will continue on at the next level. And did you see Halliburton's tweet afterwards? You know, both him and McCabe, they went, each, went against each other, you know, twice a year during the regular season, four and four. Yeah. Four and four. Even Steven, Brett. <laughs> so maybe that is maybe a little bit of a precursor to what we might see, I guess, <laughs> in the Mr. Basketball Award, them sharing it. How was the atmosphere there? Unbelievable, Brett. And it was packed. And uh, I don't know if we would have been able to fit our production in there because – where we would normally have sat was a radio station was there, and then on the other side had a bunch of kids over there uh, kind of in the way of the, of the, of, of the other fellow <laughs> doing a live I think it was a live stream or it was a radio. I can't remember what it was, but uh, it would have been a tight fit, my friend. I didn't even really get a, a, a chair I, I kinda, or, or a seat. I had to go actually physically get a chair and place it along kind of like by the, in the corner of the baseline. Yeah, I, there. Saw, I saw you on the replay. <laughs> so it's kind of squeezed <laughs> in there. So, oh, there's Ricardo. That's where he was sat. But and there's people yeah. over me. I did, just didn't want to stand up in front of everybody, and, and the people behind me really appreciated. So. Well, you know, we would have loved to have been there, but we, yeah. had, we actually really had a really nice uh, production and very yeah. good numbers uh, yeah. from, from uh, yep. uh, the Xavier Green Bay West game. Green Bay West obviously struggling right now, although a better team than the, what the record Much indicated. Better. Yeah. But very good scene and a pretty packed house at Torchy Clark, and a lot of a lot of media air, uh, there for that one as yeah. well. And they they did it up right, and uh, you know it, w- it wasn't a matter of uh, if uh, we we could uh, get that pretty early. That sense yeah. that uh, Plumlee was gonna was gonna yeah. uh, surpass that record, especially when he tied it at halftime. Yeah, there, were, there were moments yeah. in the game where he'd take a shot, and the crowd would be like, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yep. So you it just was feel it deflation when he missed but, it. But uh, he did it old school, by the way. Yep. He went in, got fouled on a three-point play. It was not a three-point shot. He did it old school, conventional. Th- no, he, he hit the winning the, the, the bucket. Oh, okay. A little yep. pump fake, uh, co- uh, created contact underneath. He yep. converted it and hit the, the free throw for the three-point play. But yep. uh, it, was, it was a pretty neat scene. And after, afterwards, I liked how Kip Whitlinger had the basketball, did a little bounce pass to uh, Hunter, a <laughs> little That's passing great. of the torch, That's little great. passing of the basketball. And 55 years, that was set in 1963. That's crazy. Wow. I can't believe that. And, and afterwards, uh, talking to uh, Mike Bates, and he said a lot of Kip's shots, you know, that was when, when Kip played, there was no three-point line. Mm-hmm. And a lot of those shots that, that he uh, that he buried were deep, you know, would have mm. been three-point buckets. So how many points oh, in yeah. today's game really would, would he have had? But what an accomplishment for Hunter. And he's going to – they got a lot of basketball still to play. they got yeah. a, lot of, a couple games maybe this week and then all the postseason. So he's going to be the, 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 the solid – Record holder, uh, and then I told uh, Hunter, I said, you know, you got to get your number two. You got to start, uh, you know, kind yeah. of uh, pleading your case. You got Rocky Blyer's number twenty-three retired in football. <laughs> Kip's number twenty-two retired in basketball. We got to see Hunter's number two. Yeah, uh, retired yeah. as well. And uh, I also asked Kip too. I said, where does this team rank for uh, Kip played on that um, 62, 63 or sixty-one, sixty-two? I'm getting a little fuzzy. That twenty-five and zero championship team. Uh, considered maybe the best team in, in Xavier history because Rocky Blyer was on that mm-hmm. squad and Torgy Clark was the coach. But this team goes back-to-back undefeated, 28-0, 28-0 with the talent it has. It maybe this this current group is the best that uh, Xavier's ever yeah. seen. Definitely in the conversation. How, how fun would it have been to see Whitlinger playing in this offense, though? Yeah. Right? You know, <laughs> the, the high tempo, 100 points a game kind of fun offense. Yeah. That, that's great stuff. So, yeah, well, I'm glad you guys were able to at least get that, uh, you know, on the live stream. Yeah. So was oh, and at the end of the live stream, if uh, – Fast forward to the end after the game is over. Brett has a really nice interview with um, Hunter. Yeah, with Hunter oh, great. at the end there. Okay, so getting him up uh, took yeah. a, took a while. He he yeah. disappeared in the lock. Yeah. He he did not want the attention. I mean, oh. he's a pretty humble kid. No. But uh, I said, come on, you gotta enjoy this. Soak it in. Yeah, this comes once oh, that's in your great. lifetime. Yeah. We'll have to check that out. I did not know that. Okay, good stuff. We'll see. P- please check that. Where can they find that, Brett? Again, the, a, a, a live stream yeah. uh, replay. Post.cr/slash/games. It has all of our uh, replays. 
All right. Well, it's time to wrap up our R&B show podcast, episode number 24. Uh, one more thing. Upcoming Varsity Roundtable later tonight, Bo Yeniman of Nina, Brock Danielski of Appleton North. Going to talk to both those guys heading to the individual state tournament uh, heading down Thursday. So I'm glad to have both those guys on. Brad, they're big guys. Uh, uh, Bo Yeniman, 195. Brock Danielski, 220. So you're looking at a couple of big guys out here. No, I'm not going to wrestle them. Well, I want to see you in like your sing- singlet, Ricardo. No, you don't want to no, yes. see me in my singlet. No, no, no. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, for any kind of further updates, again, I'll be down at the tournament uh, at PC Ricardo. Brett's at PC. Brett's, don't forget about Rosie at Metal Rosie. Until next week, have a great week, everyone, and I'll uh, see you back here next Wednesday. Here we go. Is that shoulder? Oh, oh right on. Oh, I'm going to do, do, like, baseball. Good stuff. Look at right that. Oh, I'm oh, ready I for spring it. training. I thought you could, why don't you try it, Ricardo? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, just you know. like uh, the Around the World <laughs> tournament. Oh, good stuff. <laughs>